Factors, why aren't they being explored? Is it because mainstream scientists are afraid of being wrong? Or maybe scientists are afraid of something else? September 3rd, 2017, the United States Geological Survey reported an earthquake with a magnitude of 6.3, not far from a North Korean nuclear test site. South Korean authorities said the earthquake seemed to be artificial, consistent with an underground nuclear test. North Korea confirmed that it had detonated a 15 kiloton hydrogen bomb. And this came as a terrifying surprise to the diplomatic, intelligence, and defense communities. No one had suspected that North Korea had reached that level of advancement with its nuclear weapons program. Then, just a few weeks later, in October 2017, the entire underground Korean nuclear facility collapsed after a massive earthquake. More than 200 people were killed, including most of North Korea's nuclear scientists. Within a few months, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un said his country was open to discussing peace with Sir Lab and top scientists were killed in that earthquake. Kim Jong-un had no choice but to negotiate. That worked out nicely for the United States. But what if the earthquake and destruction of the nuclear facility wasn't a natural event? What if the earthquake was caused by a new type of weapon? For years, rumors swirled that the United States had developed a highly advanced sonic weapon. Using sound waves, it could superheat the Earth's upper atmosphere and communicate with military units and submarines at sea. It could alter the weather and yes, believe it or not, induce earthquakes. The weapon is known as HARP. HARP stands for High Amplitude Active Auroral Research Program. It's a program that researches the ionosphere, the upper layer of the atmosphere, which ranges from about 30 miles to 600 miles above the Earth's surface. According to the original HARP website, there is an emphasis on being able to enhance communications and surveillance systems for both civilian and defense purposes. That's why there are a lot of rumors about HARP. The HARP website acknowledged that experiments were conducted to fire directed beams of energy in order to temporarily excite a limited area of the ionosphere. Now, disturbing the ionosphere could have major and even disastrous consequences for the environment. HARP was very active in the days and hours leading up to Hurricane Katrina making landfall in 2005. Hurricanes are energized by heat. The specific function of HARP is to heat or energize the upper atmosphere. Now, did HARP affect the hurricane? Well, we don't know. Could it have? HARP was intensely active when Hurricane Ophelia started behaving in strange ways. It changed directions multiple times against all normal meteorological predictions. It was almost as if something was playing around with Ophelia to see if they could manipulate its intensity and direction. In 2008, a rare July hurricane named Bertha suddenly formed off the coast of Africa. It was a very low-level storm, but then the harp transmitters fired up. Within eight hours, Bertha went from a weak Category 1 to an intense Category 4 storm. Almost as soon as harp was shut down, Bertha calmed down and weakened. Kevin Martin had already made the connection between electrical storms high pressional effects were connected to earthquakes. But could a device like HARP be capable of doing both? Well, that had yet to be tested until 2008. Cyclone Nargis began just a few days after HARP resumed activity at 5.45 in the morning on April 27, 2008. On April 28th, the storm was basically stationary. By April 29th, Nargis had sustained winds of 100 miles per hour and began moving. It turned rapidly eastward, intensified, and reached peak winds of 135 miles an hour. On May 2nd, it made landfall at maximum strength. It maintained winds of at least 80 miles an hour for hours before it dissipated. The harp energy activity continued for days. It finally stopped late in the day on May 11th. About eight hours later in Chengdu, China, there were reports of strange animal behavior. Iridescent glowing clouds suddenly appeared. Now, if you drew a straight line from Nargis's path as it made landfall, you'd hit Chengdu. Suddenly, a massive earthquake hit Chengdu with a magnitude of 8.0 and caused a chain reaction of explosions in the Shuan Mountains. These explosions destroyed the Chinese army's largest armory and their newest weapons test bases. Nuclear facilities that reportedly included several nuclear warheads were also severely damaged. After carefully analyzing the seismic data, Experts said the energy relief shock had occurred at the earthquake epicenter. Uh, Unnatural. Uh -oh. Over those two weeks, the Nargis cyclone and Chengdu earthquake claimed the lives of more than 160,000 people and severely damaged China's military infrastructure. Today, HARP is still in use and is run by the University of Alaska Fairbanks. But that's relatively new. 
Prior to 2014, it was under the direct control of the United States Department of Defense. Now, all of this is speculation and rumor. And of course, the U.S.